Our 2016 Gen Con coverage, I'm at the Devious Weasel Games booth with Jim Felly. Uh, he did Shadows of Malice a couple years ago, and Gen Con brand new release this year, Zimbi Mojo, which is this co-opportunistic game uh, with these cannibals. So you want to tell us about the game? Sure. So the game is co-opportunistic, which means you cooperate, but at the earliest opportunity you also defect and turn against the other players. The basic idea is that the cannibal king is sitting in his throne room in his chambers. Okay. Um, he's a, a nasty guy, and you shamans decide to kill him. Okay. Every player is the all-powerful shaman of a tribe of cannibalistic zimbies. Okay. And what you're doing is you have to work together to be able to reveal the elemental seals which will take out these should be up okay. which will take out one of the wards and allow you access to the king's chamber ah, okay. once you have access you can then attack the king gotcha. meanwhile however bugs are moving around the board trying to protect him along this red footpath okay every other turn the king goes first and will move out onto a ritual tile and fire off a ritual this one for example the ritual of hunger all the shaman have to eat some of their guys Oh, great. They come off the board, they're dead, your resources are depleted. There's okay. one resource in the game called Mojo. Okay. Every shaman gets four Mojo. Okay. So I use them to power spells and to power movement. One Mojo can move one Zimbi up to four tiles. Okay. Here I've got a stack of four Zimbies, so one Mojo, if I spend it, is going to move that only two tiles. Okay. The bigger they are, the stronger they are, the slower they move. Gotcha. You have to be grouped together with someone else to be able to flip these tiles. Okay. Now, so the interesting thing about the stacking is, for yellow to stack with green, yellow has to ask the green shaman, may I join you? And he's got to say yes. Otherwise, I can fight him, but I can't join. If he says yes, I join. Blue wants to join, they both have to agree. Okay. Now let's say you've got the stack here. On Blue's turn, Blue controls that column. He can take him into a fight, he can, he can take him into a bad area, make him get him killed on the blood vines. On Yellow's turn, Yellow controls it. On Green's turn, Green controls it. Okay. So when you're together, you're really trusting those people not to wax you too fast. Gotcha. Although you're also a meat shield for those people. True. Because if a wound comes in and kills a guy, yeah. they all go into the bag of fate. Okay. And then you say, who died? It was a yellow guy. Oh, wow. Then okay. the stack gets reassembled. All right. Now, after the king dies and you kill him, his crown's revealed. Okay. And whoever killed the king gets the crown. So if it's a column, you won't use the bag of fate to decide who's got it. Okay. Now you got to get that crown home. To win the game, Yellow would have to get the crown to Yellow's tribal board. Okay. Blue would have to get it to Blue's tribal board. This is where you turn on each other like rats. Okay. You cut off passageways, you kill each other, um, and you try to be the one to get the crown. Complicating this, there are spells you can cast. Okay. There are rituals, which are sort of I throw on you, you throw on me. Okay. Incantations, which is part of the casting cost. You put a little chanter on it, and as long as he's on that card, it has its effect. Okay. And witcheries, which are cast by your guys on the board and other guys on the board. Okay. So the mine, 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 for example, if uh, Blue's got the crown and uh, Blue's over here and Green throws mine, 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 he steals the crown and he can run it home. Oh, okay. So there's a lot of various elements that allow the crown to be transferred back and forth. Okay. The speed of the game depends on how well you cooperate up front and how well you fight each other on the way out. Okay. A um, couple other elements of the game that are kind of fun are there portals. Okay. <laughs> if uh, Zimbi Kala moves on to a portal, they automatically teleport to one of the other three portals at random. Okay. You can spend mojo to um, turn portals off to control where you go. Okay. If you you come in from the outside, uh, I'm sorry, if someone's on the portal you go to, you swap places. Okay. If there happens to be uh, deadly vines on the portal and you move, those swap places. What happens with the shadows? Okay. If you come in from the outside, they go home. But there's an eight Zimbi limit. So if you send them home, there's already eight on the board, two of them die. Wow. Okay. So the other thing is cannibalism is a main feature of the game. Your only resource is mojo. There's four mojo tokens. Right. For every Zimbi on my tribal board, I can deplete it for a mojo that turn. So that's how I get my mojo. The trade-off is the more guys I have out, the more I can do. 
but the less power I have. The more guys I have here, the more power I have, but the less focal points for witcheries I have and the less ability to grab the crown. Gotcha. If I'm desperate, I can eat a guy, and that will allow me to either get two mojo or draw a card for my hand. Okay. Last thing about cannibalism is if you're in a simple column of just your own guys, yes. you can eat your own guys. And that will give you a short-term buff, either double the effect of a witchery, double the range of a witchery, or give you extra brutality and turn you into a super-powered Zimby for a one attack. Nice. And that's the overflow of the game. Cool, cool. So looks like there's a lot of uh, underlying strategies in this one, and uh, timing is going to be of the essence, it seems like, and then also weighing the options of how much do, how much uh, mojo you really want to spend, too. That's so. right. And in fact, it's a good thing you mentioned timing. One of the things about this game is if you look at, let's suppose the tribal boards look like this okay. at the end of the round. Okay. You'd say, okay, he's got one active Zimby, two active Zimbies, three, two, he's got the most, he goes first next turn. Okay. In place, so the first mover changes, and the first mover gets control of the bag of fate, and all of the rolls for the non-players, for the thugs, and for the king, that guy makes. Nice. So if he fires off a bad ritual, blame him for being the first mover. Right, right, right. Um, and the die rolling in the game is for some variable effects. So for instance, uh, Bolt of Lightning will do one to two wounds. And part of that is to model the sort of happy-go-lucky ineptitude of the Zimbies. Okay. I'm channeling through, but you know what? They're idiots. Right. So they'll screw it up somehow. Cool. cool. So that's the gist. All right. So again, it's Zimby Mojo. It's uh, fresh from Devious Fusel Games here at Gen Con 2016. And uh, after Gen Con, how is the game available? So uh, it will be hitting the U.S. shores in about a month, and it will go through normal distributions. So you'll be able to pick it up, pick it up off the Devious Fusel website. Uh, if you choose to do that, you will get a set of promo cards, okay. ten playable cards, and a handy dandy little cheat sheet. Um, which I don't have available, which tells you uses for Mojo and turn order. Awesome. Um, if you choose to buy it through your friendly local game store, it will be available okay. through normal distribution channels at your normal store. Uh, if you're so inclined, talk to them today, tell them you want it, and have them put it on their list for their distributors to stock. Awesome. Sounds good. All right. Well, thank you. And again, this is Jim Felly with Devious Weasel Games, and we are here at Gen Con 2016, and we will talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. All right. Bye-bye.